we continue our focus on the President's economic recovery plan, which he is scheduled to give at 2 p.m. We go outside Parliament now, where a group of demonstrators are demanding land. For more on this, our reporter Atim Tongana uh, joins us live, but, but also in uh, Cape Town, we've got our business editor, Kulani Mbajo. We'll be touching base with him in a moment as well. But over to you first, Ati. What exactly is happening, a group of demonstrators gathering outside Parliament today? Well, Tammy, most members of Parliament, remember, are not going to be joining this joint sitting uh, called upon by President Sil Ramaphosa in Parliament. They will be joining it virtually. And a Parliament in the last couple of months has really been dead in as far as movement is concerned. But today, of course, just minutes before President Sil Ramaphosa delivers that economic recovery plan, we are seeing people coming here to make various demands. The impact of COVID-19 has affected various sectors of society and various uh, uh, departments within the national uh, government and local government. And today we have uh, farm workers, particularly women farm workers. We haven't seen them in a long while. Most of the time when you hear of farm workers and farmers, you hear about males. It's a male-dominated industry. And it's interesting today that just before a uh, president Sir Ramaphosa delivers that economic recovery plan. You have a group of female farm workers who are here to make various demands. Now, I'm going to walk to a common law who's one of the organizers here who's going to tell us exactly why uh, women on farms decided to come here today. We know it's, of course, a day that President Sir Ramaphosa has called a joint sitting of parliament. Uh, why is it that this particular industry, first of all, is male-dominated? Is it a struggle for women to exist in farms and to be able um, to, to function within uh, agriculture? Yes, it is. It's male-dominated. It's historically male-dominated because 72% of the land belongs to white males. So today is International Rural Women's Day and farm women as rural women has come here today to demand from the President and Minister Toko de Diza that they that land be just redistributed to them so that they can generate their own income and not be dependent on insecure handouts and jobs from farmers who continue to control, abuse and exploit them. Now I'm interested to hear just briefly, Carmen, uh, just your view. We've been seeing a lot of uh, stories about farm murders. How has that impacted uh, females in particular in this particular agriculture sector? Well, women farm workers have been murdered and abused. We call it femicide. Um, as a result of patriarchal orders. So I don't know why there's only this big focus now on farm murders, but women suffer daily and they've been suffering and dying for years without the same amount of attention given to them. What are you hoping today when the uh, President delivers, and at least when uh, the National Assembly and the NCOP deliver, deliberates about the economic recovery plan? Well, we hope that the President will extend the 350 basic grant, but a uh, uh, social grant, COVID relief grant, but we hope that they'll start working on a basic grant to especially accommodate farm workers who only work for a few months per year and are basically poor and hungry for the rest of the time. All right, thank you very much for your time, Carmen Lowe, who is one of the organizers for this particular march, hoping, of course, that President Sir Ramaphosa will include uh, in his uh, economic recovery plan the plight of particularly female uh, farm workers in the Western Cape. That's where we leave it for now, Tammy. We'll bring you more later on. Uh, thank you so much, Ati. Uh, certainly one issue that uh, farmers are talking about, the fact that there is no land that's going to be um, expropriated without compensation in either Gauteng or the Western Cape, uh, so their particular region there uh, being excluded from what uh, Minister Togo Tidiza had uh, announced. But staying in Parliament now, we cross to our business reporter, uh, business editor rather, Kulani Mbanjo, who is with the leader of the ACDP, Kenneth Meshwe, ahead of the president address. Over to you, uh, Kulani, and perhaps expectations from the ACDP for this afternoon.
Thank you very much, uh, Tommy. Yes, indeed, I'm with the uh, leader of the ACDP, Reverend Kenneth Mesher. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Mesher, for joining us. Uh, we've caught up with a number of political parties about what they would like to see in uh, this uh, economic recovery plan that's going to be tabled in a couple of minutes. What would you, as the ACDP, like to see being tabled today by the president? Firstly, we don't want to hear a repeat of what he has been saying all along for years. But secondly, we would want him to start implementing some of the plans that they have on paper. One of them, which is infrastructure development. They've been talking about infrastructure development for a long time, and it's not happening. All right? ACDP says it's time to do that so that jobs can be created. But secondly, we know that he is going to need money in order to make sure that it happens. And where is that money going to come from? ACDP says, don't go to borrow again, because you are already in a deep hole of debt. We don't want that hole to be bigger. So how can they get the money we need for infrastructure development? The ACDP says they are billions, if not trillions, of rents that have been stolen, looted, and through corruption, lost to the fiscals. So we are saying, recover all that money. It is possible. Many of the people who have corrupted the state, many of the people who have looted from the state are known. Some of them are in the House. They are members of parliament. They are known. But nothing's been done about that. So we are saying as the ACDP, go and find all that money. The state has the ability through SARS, through NPA, through the Hawks, to ensure that all the stolen money is recovered. If the president does not show seriousness about fighting corruption, to make sure that money is available, to ensure that infrastructure development does happen, he's not going to be taken seriously. But the issue of beneficiation, we know that government has been talking about it for years also, but it is not happening. And we believe that it is not right for us to always send out the raw materials that we can benefit from by ensuring that jobs are created when we do beneficiation with those minerals, okay? So the ACDP is saying, let the government start focusing on also making sure that jobs are given to our people in localization, rather than buy things that we can make ourselves. I mean, it's shocking to hear that even toothpicks are, are imported. Why would you import toothpicks when you can do toothpicks yourselves? So we are saying government must ensure that um, um, infrastructure development does take place and that money that has been looted must be recovered. It must be recovered. They must stop borrowing because it has gone for too long and uh, it's only creating a bigger hole that is going to hold us as slaves for many years. And the ACDP says that must stop and beneficiation must also take place. Thank you very much, Reverend Mesher. Well, you heard it there from Reverend uh, Kenneth Mesher there of the ACDP saying, uh, let's uh, deal with the corrupt, let's uh, get our money back, and uh, stop actually importing things that we can make ourselves. Uh, this is Polani Banjo here in Parliament. Back to you there in studio, Tami. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tolani, and to Ati who are out in, in Parliament today.